Hi, this is Glenda. I've been making waterfall cards. Um, it's one of the things that's been on my to-do list for a long time and I just hadn't got around to it because they looked fiddly and I can never be bothered with fiddly. Uh, and it's one of those many things that once you actually start you find they're really simple. Um, so I'll show you what I've done. This was the first one I did and uh, I just put some baby pictures and I fastened it with ribbon across which I'll explain in a minute but just to show the different things you can do. Um, they were dark room door pictures so you just buy them already done and nothing to it. Uh, then I moved on to this one and uh, that was a, a flip book series I downloaded from internet um, and it was at that point that I realized you need a fairly firm card for this part so lesson learned along the way. Um, the next one I did was this one and it just has repeated lace pattern on each one and I'm not keen on that because to me it doesn't make any sense as to why you've got this flip picture with just a repeated picture so to me they need to have some sort of series of pictures so um, I moved on to this balloon one um, which didn't really work but it shows that you can use a different shape you don't have to use a square um, but it I wanted it to look like it was flying away and it really doesn't so won't try that again uh, this one I put a, a series of messages on each one um, I used the slightly stronger card here and it might, works much better um, and then I did this one uh, which was just some pictures of a calendar or something um, of some birds so it kind of shows a little slideshow I guess you'd say um, and then this last one is my husband's birthday card and it's supposed to show a rabbit coming out of a hat and it was supposed to be a hidden one but obviously I got that seriously wrong and he will never know and if he did he wouldn't care anyway um, so it's the thought that counts but you can actually make it hidden so that if you make the pieces bigger as you go along um, it'll just be a pile instead of a, a cascade uh, so that's uh, what I've been using um, yes so this, uh, this one I should have said instead of putting a piece across because all of these have a piece that's sort of part of the mechanism uh, this one I cut a slit um, in um, now I don't know if you can see it but I've cut a slit there which sort of went along the embossed pattern so instead of putting a separate piece across I've just got a slit and it comes down through there um, other than that I mean this one I've used um, that bling mesh for the cross piece so you don't have to use just card um, you know you can use anything that will give you a, a decent cross piece uh, so I'll get these out of the way and just quickly show how to make these. I know there are heaps and heaps of tutorials out there of how to do this already, um, but I went through quite a few and made a little summary for myself of what worked for me, and so I thought I'd just share it because I did go through, you know, quite a lot to get to this point. Um, so the first thing is you decide on the size and number of panels that you want to have and you can do anything you like you can do one of the demos had like 15 and they were snapshot photos so you know you can do three it uh, would probably be the minimum I would think um, and work your way up so I've got um, four little pictures here ready so you, you do want to think about a bit what order they go in um, so I've matted them um, but I think these are they're one and three eighths after they're matted um, but as I showed in the others there's all different sizes there you do what you like with these um, so the next thing is a long strip um, and it can be either the same width or a bit narrower than your panels 
and the first score is going to be, so it's about square, so this is one and a half, so I'm going to do my first score at one and a half. Then you want to have a total of scores for each one, so if I've got four panels I'm going to have, there's my first one, two, three, four. Now I've made them half an inch, you can make them any distance you like as long as they're all the same. Um, but half an inch, two centimetres, three quarters of an inch, go for whatever you like. Then you want to bend your bends back and forth so they're nice and used. And then we're just going to, sorry, I am referring to the notes that I made, um, hopefully so I don't leave anything out. The first one we're just going to put some tape on. Now, the first picture you put down at the bottom is going to be the last picture they see. So I'm going to put this one down as my last one. And I have some other tape. Use this. Uh, you want to put your tape just below each score line. mount these just below the score line, preferably lining them up. Most people will line them up better than I do. So that's that part done. Um, now you want a piece to go across. Uh, in this case I'm just going to use a piece of card. You can either do this straight onto your card base and then you'll want to line it to cover the brads um, or you can do it um, on a, a front piece and then mount it onto your card base. Uh, whatever rocks your boat. You can attach this with really strong tape because it's got to be at either side and it's going to take a bit of um, pulling so eyelet spreads or seriously strong tape I think are your options. Now you want to put your waterfall part on your card and just eyeball where you want it because this is going to go, this bottom one gets stuck to this piece so depending where you want the waterfall to be, it's going to depend on where you put the bar. So that looks fine to me. Oh, right up until I moved it again. I'm just going to put my brads in either side. Before I attach that, what I might actually do is stamp my card. I can just remember which one of these things I was going to put on it. This one, I think. Which may not work anymore. I think I had plans to have this lower down. So that's because I planned this card out yesterday and then didn't film it till today. So that might still be good. Okay. This is where we watch me mark up the stamping because I'm pretty sure it's going to be gooey. Yep. 
there is a mark. Well, I see bling in my future. We'll press on, it's not that bad. Okay, so just check that this still looks okay like that. And of course it's slightly crooked because everything I do is slightly crooked. Okay, so the long panel goes in behind and this comes down over the front. You're going to want some strong sticky strip or such because this is what's going to take most of the, the pulling. Okay, so double check that we're as straight as I ever get it. And that just sticks down there. Now, what I've been doing to get the length of this piece right, you could, actually with this one, you could leave it quite long like that. I might even just do that. Um, what I've been doing is pulling it down a fraction and cutting it off level and then adding a tab to it. But on this one, I think what I will do is just cut it off level and then pull it down a fraction. that. I shall add a bit of bling over that there, nice little blue diamante and I'll put a liner in it and um, that's all there is to making a waterfall card. You just stick squares or whatever shape you like onto a scored strip. Um, it's pretty simple but as I say make sure this fits strong enough uh, especially if your cards are a bit bigger and heavier. Um, and that was it, so I think I've explained everything there and I've finally got around to trying the waterfall card, so thanks for watching.